Okay, guys, this is 5.1, quadratic functions. All right, so a quadratic function is one that looks some variation like this, okay? It can be flipped over. It can be really, really wide. It can be really, really skinny. It is some variation of that, okay? So a quadratic function is going to be something that looks like that, or it can be... Um, representing a set of information like we have here. So rock music managers handle publicity and other business issues for the artists they manage. One group's manager has found that based on past concerts, the predicted income for a performance is this function right here, where X is the price per ticket in dollars. So what they charge per ticket and then what that and then what they can expect to make from that concert. All right, so what happens to the income as the ticket prices rise? So as the ticket prices rise, there's a there's a breaking point, okay? If they charge really cheap, you know, they might sell off the concert, but they won't make very much money. If they overcharge, they're not going to make much money because nobody's going to come. There's a happy medium, and it seems to be right about here to where you're going to find the right balance between the price and the money you're going to make. So that's going to be kind of what we're looking at. So for this contest for the rock concert they charge probably about 40 bucks a ticket they can expect to make about seventy two thousand dollars just from that concert still a quadratic function all right quadratic function is in some way shape or form this ax squared plus bx plus c all right ax squared plus bx plus c now let's let's take a look at what the most simple basic parent function of a quadratic looks like all right the most simple basic quadratic function called the parent function is just x squared all right and it's real real simple if you graphed it in a calculator it follows this pattern so zero is zero I go over one, up one, over two, up four, and then mirror that on the other side. And that follows because if I just put in a couple generic points for x, so if I go negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, well, negative two squared is a positive four. Negative one squared is a positive one. 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. All right, so that is the most basic, simple quadratic function that exists. Everything else that I do is going to move it left or right, move it up or down, or make it wider or make it skinnier. Okay, so the form we've got it in is called standard form. Okay, so you've got ax squared plus bx plus c. That's going to be considered standard form. So now if you look at the graph, you've got a couple of points here. One is your vertex. Your vertex is either the lowest point or the highest point. Right, in this case, since it's opening up, it's going to be my lowest point. All right. I've also got the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry basically is where does the graph switch directions. Okay, if I'm looking at it from left to right, you know, where does my... Where does it stop going down and start going up? That's what I'm looking at. All right, my y-intercept is just C. That means if X is zero, what am I doing? Where am I crossing at? Okay, and then what I oftentimes do, what's a good idea to do, is once you figure out where that y-intercept is, mirror it on the other side, just like that. All right, just mirror it on the other side. That gives you kind of a point to go for in graphing this thing. So the axis of symmetry is negative b over 2a. Negative b over 2a comes from the function itself. b is what's in front of the x value. a is going to be what's in front of the x squared value, or that first function. All right, so let's take a look at what we're trying to do here. All right, a is positive, a is negative. So if a is positive, it opens up. a is negative, it opens down. Please also notice, if it opens up, the vertex is a minimum. If it opens down, the vertex is a maximum. And if, as you look at the graph, I really hope that makes sense. The graph bottoms out here. It's not going to get any lower 
then this, you're not going to have any values down here. This, you're not going to be values up here. This is where it tops out. That's the maximum. So take a look here. X squared minus 6X plus 3. So let's take a look. A in this case would be 1. B would be negative 6. C would be 3. So now if you remember y-intercept, the y-intercept is just c. So the y-intercept is going to be 3. So that means it's going to cross right here. All right, so now the axis of symmetry, remember, was negative b, sorry, negative b over 2 times a. So now negative b over 2 times a. That's going to be negative, negative 6 over 2 times 1 negative b over 2 times a. When I do that, I get a positive 3. So my axis of symmetry is going to be at positive 3. So x equals 3. That's going to be this line right here. Okay. Now what I like to do is, since I've got my um, y-intercept right there, mirror that on the other side. All right. That way I know somewhere it's going to cross those two points when I end up drawing it. So now figuring out the vertex, here's how you figure out the vertex. Okay, it's real, real simple. Once you've got your axis of symmetry, you need to realize that that is the x value of your vertex. Okay, somewhere along this axis of symmetry is going to be my vertex, is going to be the lowest point on this graph. I need to figure out where it is. Well, it's not too difficult. All I do once I get 3, put it back in the function for x. All right, so if g of x is my function, so I take g of 3. All right, so that becomes 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 3. All right, all I do is substitute what I got for my axis of symmetry back into my function. So when I do that, that becomes 9. That becomes 18. That becomes 3. That becomes negative 9 plus 3. So that's negative 6. So my vertex is going to be at 3, negative 6. So that's going to be right there. So it's going to go right like that. That is just a quick sketch of the function. So now here I've got a couple things in front. All right, so A is going to be 4. B is going to be negative 8. C is going to be 2. So y-intercept is 2. So it's going to cross there. Axis of symmetry. Negative B over 2 times A. And that's going to be a negative, negative 8 over 2 times 4. So that's going to be 1. So my axis of symmetry is going to be where x equals 1. So that's going to be right here. So now, like I said before, okay, I've got my y-intercept. Mirror that on the other side of the axis of symmetry. So at least now I know where I start. Now, put 1 back in there into your function. So this is going to be 4, this is going to be 8, this is minus 8 plus 2, so that's going to be at negative 2. So my vertex is going to be at 1, negative 2. So it's going to be right there. It's going to be a very, very steep one. It's going to increase in a, in a hurry. Okay, so let's take a look. An object is fired straight up from the top of a 200-foot tower at a velocity of 80 feet per second. The, second. the height of the object t seconds after firing is given by ht 1600 t, negative 16 t squared plus 80 t plus 200. Find the maximum height reached by the object and the time that the height is reached. So here's what kind of what the function's saying. All right, you're, start, you're starting off at the top of a 200-foot tower. All right, you're launching it up at a velocity of 80 feet per second. So now use your heads. Negative means it's going to bring is something that's bringing it back down. 
Okay, so negative 16. What helps bring things back down to Earth? If you guess gravity, that is correct. This negative 16 T squared is how we measure gravity in terms of feet. Okay, notice everything's in feet, so that's how we do it. So if my function, negative 16 T squared, that's gravity. 80 T is going to be, um, 80 T is how much I shoot it off with. 200 is how, how high I start. So basically, if I want to visualize this, I'm standing at the top of a tower. It's 200 feet in the air. I'm launching it up, and it's coming back down. I want to know where's my highest point. All right, that's a 200 feet, not a 300 feet. So A is going to be negative 16. B is going to be 80. Um, C is going to be 200. Now, I want to know the highest point that is reached and when. So thinking about this, okay, as a graph would look like this. This is my time in seconds. And this is the height itself. So I'm starting at 200. And it's going something like this. I want to figure out this point right here. Where is it the highest? And how long does it take to get there? So I want to essentially figure out my vertex. It's a fancy way of saying figure out my vertex. So start by figuring out your axis of symmetry. So it's going to be negative 80 over 2 times negative 16. So that's going to be negative 80 over negative 32 which is going to be two and a half so two and a half seconds after i launch this thing it's at its highest point so it takes two and a half seconds to get there now how high does it get well i need to put two and a half back in here for my time. So I'm going to take negative 16, 2.5 squared, plus 80 times 2.5, plus 200. So if I work that out quick, if I work that out, I get 300. So what I did was figure out that after I launch this thing, two and a half seconds after I launch this thing, it's going to get to 300, and that's the highest it's going to go. Okay, so Libby throws a ball in the air with a velocity of 64 feet per second. She releases the ball 5 feet above the ground. The height of the ball is given in time t seconds. After release is modeled by it's negative 16 squared. Once again, that's gravity. Plus v at 0. And all that is is a fancy way of saying what's my initial velocity. And h sub 0 is what's my height that I launch it at. So this is going to be negative 16 t squared the initial velocity is 64 feet per second the initial height is five so i need to figure out what is the maximum height that the ball reaches and the time that it is reached so kind of trying to visualize this thing she lets it go at five we're trying to figure out how high does it go and when does it get there before it comes back down so again, I want to figure out my vertex. So A is negative 16, B is 64, C is negative 5. My vertex, the y-intercept doesn't really help me. I know it's plus 5, sorry, apologize, positive 5. So vertex, the y-intercept doesn't help me because I already know what it is. It's 5, that's, you know, once you let's go of the ball, where do I start it? It's at 5 feet in the air. So negative B over 2 times A is going to be negative 64 over 2 times negative 16. So when I do that, I end up getting 2. So at 2 seconds is when this thing is the highest in the air that's ever going to get. So now throw 2 back in here for T. So 2 squared is 4 times negative 16 is negative 64. 64 times 2 is 128 plus 5. This becomes positive 64 plus 5. So that's going to be 69. So at 2 seconds, this ball is 69 feet in the air. All right. So if you got questions, please um, pause, rewind, stop, whatever you got to do. 
that's all I got. I will talk to you in class, and I look forward to answering your question.